Hello and welcome to this new video in the Spark playlist. In this video we will understand about Spark components and API. Let's get started. Firstly, we'll talk about components. So Apache Spark has several components which we need to know. The first and the most important for us for data engineering is Spark SQL. So this is one of the strongest components in which we are going to be working very often. We will learn about Spark SQL in detail separately. The next is Spark MLLib. As the name suggests, this is dedicated to machine learning libraries. So we are not going to be learning that since our core focus being on data engineering. The next one is Spark Structured Streaming. This for sure we would be looking into. And the another one is Graphics. So out of all these four, for us in data engineering, Two are the most important ones, Spark SQL and Spark Structured Streaming. Next one is APIs. Even before we go further, let us understand first what an API is. API stands for Application Programming Interface. So consider you want to learn a programming or you want to learn a tool or technology. So as far as any programming is concerned, underneath it has some backend code written. And at the front end, you are being issued or given access to a set of libraries or codes or statements. So this library codes or statements is the way how you can communicate with that tool technology or programming language. Similarly, Apache Spark is completely programming. It is interesting to note over here that majority of the Apache Spark code is primarily written into Scala language. So obviously Scala becomes the topmost choice for you to do any developments or write any codes in Spark. But Scala is not only the choice. So let us see what are the other choices and then we will discuss few things on this. Python is another language in which you can do the Spark development. You also have Java, then comes R and SQL. So these are five options available. Out of this five except SQL which means Scala, Python, Java, and R. These are all programming languages. SQL is a query language. SQL is not a programming language. So keep that in mind. Now, since the underneath code or the source code of Spark is mainly written into Scala, Scala is the topmost choice and it blends well. But the reality is in market, there are more number of Python developers as compared to Scala. Hence, you would see lot of people would do the development into Python. Now, originally since Scala was the language which is being used to develop the Spark and also to code the programming uh, or whatever pipelines we do or development. Later on what happened is due to the popularity of Python they also released an API on top of Apache Spark which could uh, enable the developers to do the coding in Python and it was named as PySpark. So it is nothing but an API on top of Spark called as PySpark which is enabling you to do your developments into Python. Hence you will see more number of people who are working on PySpark or who are uh, number of developers as compared to who are working on Scala. But now comes the choice as to which one should you learn and which one is better. So let us understand few things on this. The first thing we will talk about is performance. Since the original code being written into Scala, if you do any developments on Scala, and especially you have long running pipelines like pipelines running for hours, Scala beats Python. And the reason is simple because the underlying code and the one which you are interacting with is the same. So there needs no extra communication or a conversion layer in between. But for Python, there was a, another API, which is PySpark, added on top of the original code. So here's where there is a gap. And then the long running pipelines, that's where Python loses the race. As far as data engineering is concerned, Scala remains the top choice. But the issue is you have more number of people in market who know Python and eventually PySpark becomes their top choice. So how can we approach if you're a beginner? What should be a step? What should you learn? Should you learn Scala or Python? Which one? My take is why not learn both? And I'll explain you why that's the case. But firstly, as soon as you heard this, why not learn the both? 
languages you would have think you would, would have been thinking okay that's a steep learning curve that's not the case remember as far as any programming language you want to learn not just scala or python any language it is all about the basics and i'll give you at least like 8 to 10 things fundamentally what you should know in any programming language rest things you can learn them as you progress so let's say first you can start with python if you are absolute beginner to programming and then you can come with scala however you can go with scala as well so that's your choice and once you learn one language to a fundamental level you can replicate the same in another language it's only difference about syntax and few things so how will you start after the introduction and installation of the tool or the ide what you can do is firstly you learn about variables how to use them how to create them how to store data into it then you learn about the data type and declaration next you learn about if else statement then you learn the case statement which is a substitute to if then going further you learn about different type of loops like for loop do loop while loop etc then you learn about various string functions those are very very handy the next thing you learn about creating your own functions which is nothing but user defined functions so this is fundamental at least this much then the next part into advanced is creating classes knowing about object oriented programming and etc and then something more is regex that you got to know so i have covered all of these fundamentals in detail on both scala and python in separate playlist in both english and hindi on each of them on our channel so you can watch out them and as you progress further slowly slowly you can learn everyone doesn't know everything remember that and you will also learn plenty of thing while you start working on the projects so don't get worried just follow these things these many things and that should be fine now by learning both things firstly you become eligible to appear for interview wherein you know since you know both you have an upper hand as compared to a person who just knows scala or python and that the case is because you know company would not be you know only filtering you out on basis of okay only you know scala so you'll be eligible for only scala projects and if you know python you'll be only eligible for pyspark that's not the case another thing is at times even if the project is primarily on scala or python there are some codes on other languages like either scala or python and vice versa you have to migrate so that's where you have that added benefit and you never know about future so go hand in hand with both of them and that's how it would be beneficial for you the most important thing before you proceed further on the apache spark playlist or the learning be it here or anywhere if you don't know any programming language either scala or python you must not proceed it's okay to understand the theory a bit but when it will come to the point where we are starting learning into coding you will not be able to understand remember spark cannot be developed or coded on its own individually you need a programming language to club it and that's where you all need to learn either scala or python so go back and first learn the fundamentals through our channel or any other place on scala and python and then come back into learning the apache spark journey further so hope this video explains you and uh, gives you an insight as to how you should proceed that's it in this video see you in the next one thanks for watching and stay tuned